Who's excited to be at PASS today? That's really it. Who's excited to be at PASS today? All right, we're pretty excited to be here today. We've been incubating this stuff for a little bit. Ted's just talked about it, and what we want to do is share it with you. What we're going to do is show you something that we have hosted in the cloud that's coming out where we'll give you an experience for doing discovery, enrichment, and publishing of your data. Also, we're going to have that where it's not just your data, it's the world's data. So with that, let's just go drill right in. Let's dive in. All right, so what we're going to do is set the stage. We've given you a nice blank white screen to look at, and we're going to set the stage here. Everybody says I look like a barista today, but apparently what we're going to do is go work on the other self-service. Everybody knows about self-service BI, right? Okay. Well, we're talking about, yeah. How many of you guys know about self-service frozen yogurt? All right. So big thing now, and a bunch of people have been asking us, how can we get into the self-service yogurt business? And so we've been working with this company, you might have heard of it, Contoso Frozen Yogurts. And what they want is to figure out how they're going to get the next killer location. They've got a couple locations in Washington, and they want to get the next killer location. And we said, hey, we have the technology that can help you out. So what they did is they gave us a database, a SQL Azure database, which we're going to add to our site right now. And that SQL Azure database has a bunch of data that they've prepped for us so we could look at their existing sites. Specifically, what we asked them to do is give us a, data, a view that had their existing locations and their latitudes and longitudes so we can do some analysis on that. They were even nicer and gave us a normalized performance score. This is a relative score between their stores so that we could kind of look at how the existing stores are doing. So we've added that, and now that blank white screen, it's got the database in the top right, but it's also got some other stuff. Nino, tell us about this stuff. So as Ted referred, a key capability of this experience is discovering related data. So what the service has done is when we added the database, we actually looked at the data, the values themselves, and we've semantically classified those values. That in turn is effectively extracting the nouns of what's in the data and determining intent. That allows us to bring you highly relevant recommendations. So this is a part of our discovery experience because often what you have to do is you have to go search for these things, but now we're bringing the data to you. You can actually discover this based on what's related to you. Does that make sense? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Wow, I actually interpreted your data. Okay. I noticed that there's something gray there that says unclassified. What's up with that? Well, we can't classify all of the world's data, at least not right away. So the way the service works and the application will work is you'll be able to let us know what data we haven't classified. What we can do is we can learn from that, and then we can then in turn return highly relevant recommendations to you for your data. Great. So that sounds like a machine learning application that we're applying right there. Absolutely. Sweet. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we went off and prepped an Excel file, which Nino's going to pull in, which is just a set of candidate locations plus their existing locations. Because what we wanted to do is see how they, their existing stores are doing and what some new locations could look like. Oh, wow. So you've added that file already? Yep. Great. So if Nino clicks on these two things, notice that we have this new option with these two data sources, and it's called Mashup. And this is where we transition from just this kind of insights and discovery where I was understanding my information to this new step, which is what we call the enrichment phase. And what we really can do here is we can take our data and we can start overlaying and imposing other pieces of data on top of it. That's why we refer to it as a mashup. Now, Nino's pulling in the Excel file, and we're going to go preview that data right there. So now we've got the data set that we had from Excel. And then we're going to go preview the data that we, that we got from the SQL Azure database. So there was a few tables in there, and we're just going to go drill into the one that was most interesting to us. So we've got this view that they actually gave us that we can go look at. And as we look at that, what we'll see is that there's the latitude and longitude like we said, but there's also this performance value, this relative performance value. And what we want to do is we want to take that relative performance value and we want to overlay it on the Excel file, that data that we already had that um, we're going to do the analysis on. And so Nino's doing this right now for us. Now, when I say overlay, we spoke to a bunch of information workers, end users, guys who were using other technologies where you could do mashup and so on. And what we found was that where we think of these things as joins, they think of these things as lookups or mergers. And so what Nino just did was a lookup. 
where we've looked up the performance for any existing locations. And that's between Excel and SQL Azure, right? Yep, absolutely. OK, so now the other thing I noticed was that when Nina was doing this, we've got these two little blue boxes down in the left. Are those the recommendations from the first page? Yeah, actually, it's a subset of the recommendations. So um, as we've talked about, these recommendations are highly contextual, highly relevant. So in this particular case, these two recommendations in the bottom left are brought up to us as we're working in context of the data in the shopping center's uh, table. Nice. So demographics seems like a good way to try and make some correlations that would assess performance of existing stores and maybe a leading indicator for what future performance is. So why don't we go pull in the demographics information? Yeah, let's go take a look at it. So the interesting thing about this is this is demographics information that's been recommended to us from the Azure marketplace. Okay? This is what we often look at as traditional reference data. And what we're going to do is we're going to go take this right now and we're going to overlay it on that Excel file again. Remember that we talked about lookups and mergers. And so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to do a merge. We, we hear that this is simpler language for end users. And you'll see, if you can see the screen, that um, you have the ability to actually specify things that start smelling like outer joins and so on. But we're just going to do a simple merge where the zip codes for the shopping centers match zip codes in the demographics. So we'll pull that in. Are we done? Is that it? Yeah, it was that easy. Dude, what did we just do? So it's pretty incredible. We connected to a database. We uploaded an Excel file. We connected. We joined those two. We also uh, took advantage of an OData feed from the marketplace that was recommended to us. And we've quickly merged that into the data set. So now we have this really beautiful table of these various data sources. So I don't know if you guys who are tweeting missed that or not, because it was a little quick, right? But with just about three or four clicks, we just yeah. did a three-way join across Excel, SQL Azure, and a feed in the marketplace. How cool is that? <laughs> Nino and I were sweating in the back because we didn't know if you guys would actually clap for that or not. So thank you. OK, so what we've done right now is we've actually pulled in some reference data from the marketplace. And like I said, that's traditional reference data. Ted talked about how many companies today use that kind of data. But Ted also pointed out that there's this notion of the world's data. And there's a, a plethora of interesting information that we can pull in beyond just the traditional reference data that we use um, today. When we actually looked at this, and when we were building out this demo, we thought that we would just pull in demographics information and we'd be done. Because clearly we thought, Financial, you know, the financial and population information, like per capita income and how many people were close to a location, those would be the best indicators of performance for a shopping center, or more specifically for a frozen yogurt shop. It turns out that those are good indicators, but they aren't necessarily the best indicators. And Nino had this hunch. What was the hunch? Well, I know that kids, especially uh, kids in high school, love frozen yogurt. They hang out there quite a bit. They love the stuff. So kids love frozen yogurt. So if we want to be exploitive, we got to go figure out where the kids are. And so it turns out that as we're doing this, we can actually leverage the world's data. On the marketplace, there's actually Bing services that we're doing so that we can start leveraging the data that we use to power Bing. With, so as you guys can see here, because the fact that we've semantically looked at the data in this table, and we've seen that there's things like what looks to us like store locations and geo information. We're recommending a phone book because a lot of people like to look things up based on location. So in this particular case, we're going to consume the Bing phone book. So now what we're doing, as Nino adds that, is we've added some traditional reference data, the demographics information. And now we're adding what we've been lovingly talking about as the new reference data, this interesting information that you can gather from things like Bing as we go out and and get, uh, crawl the web, we actually can get this information. And we can now start surfacing this in our application. So we're overlaying the number of schools, number of high schools, within a one mile radius of each location to see what we have. And there we go. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, I quickly did that in the formula bar. But we're basically contacting the Bing web service, the Bing phone book. And we're asking it for schools within the area of the long and lat that we have in our, in our data here. So in this particular case, we just did a basic list count. We've got the number of schools in the radius of each shopping center. It was that easy. Yeah. OK. So Ted talked about another kind of interesting new reference data. And that's sentiment data, right? So if you think of the, all the stuff that's going on in the, in the social space nowadays and how we get sentiment. And it turns out that 
as we were playing with this, we realized that we can get recommended sentiment information. Yep. And so, Nina, why don't you add the sentiment? So again, another service recommended. And as Ted also pointed out, we won't always recommend sentiment for everything. The service itself is intelligent. It sees that there's a noun in the data set that would be applicable to sentiment. For example, you know, we have store locations. So we'll go ahead and we'll click sentiment. And if we look here at the end of the table, we can see that there's a normalized sentiment score for those, those particular store locations. So now there's a little subtle point here that I want to make. We now have a five-way join that's going on, except for it's, you know, we're not talking about just vanilla data sets that we're doing joins on. That would be hard enough, right? But we wanted to jack the difficulty. And so what we actually have here is the Bing calls are service calls. The sentiment calls are service calls. So we're joining rectangular data sets that we're actually pulling in from this different feed or from the Excel file or the view in SQL Azure with actual service calls. The end user doesn't know the difference, right? We're actually working that out and making that all possible so that you can build the data set that you want. How cool is that? Okay. Um, so finally, we've got the data set that we want. We've done now a little bit of discovery, a little bit of enrichment, and what we want to do is we want to take this and start sharing it with others. If we were working for Contoso frozen yogurts, what we would do is we would take this and try and build a report so that we can give them the analysis on here's where the next door should be. And so we're going to go publish this yep. on this publish page. Yep. The publish page is a page that we create. It's your little individual page for that data set that you build. And whenever you build a data set, you can do this for any of your data sets. The notion here is that I can take this and I can share it with somebody and they can now consume it in the file that they, in the application that they want or they can go build an app on top of it. In our case, often what we'll do is we'll take these data sets because we'll build a bunch of these and then we'll go pull it out into Power Pivot because we're nice on ramp to our self-service BI tools where you can do this, you can create some more relationships in Power Pivot and then you can do some deep analysis. Since we've just created one simple rectangle, we're just going to pull it up in Excel. So Nino has pilled it up in Excel, and that's the raw data that we just mashed up. So now we've done a whole bunch of processing in the cloud, brought it local. We could have shared it with anybody that we wanted. OK. So Tim, actually, just for the sake of the demo, what I did is I uh, just did a little bit of sorting. Um, and I just cleaned it up. And as you can see here, we have our answer. And this answer is actually derived from information that we, we discovered during the experience. So what are the three best shopping centers that we could look at? So based on the data, Lincoln Square, Bellevue Galleria, Factoria Mall, Sammamish Highlands. And all I did on the right-hand side is I built a really simple weighting that just said, consider the money in the area, the capital income, look at how many schools are in the, in the area, and then also factor in the sentiment. We want to make sure that these locations are, have a positive uh, relationship with customers. Love that. So now, finally, we did that analysis on just a small set of stores. Or locations. But imagine that I wanted to go take this and generalize this and use this information for other places, smoothie shops, other restaurants, and so on and so forth. Well, I could do that now because this is just a declarative query. We could go change that original source, which is that list of Excel, that Excel file, which is the list of shopping centers, and expand that out to be the shopping centers in the United States. And we could do that analysis, and then we could go publish that back into the marketplace and sell that. So not only did we do our insights, but we can take this and we can sell it so that everybody else can get their insights as well. Nice way to do another round of monetization. Nice way to share your analysis. So with that, we can't show you that piece today. But if Ted lets us come back next year, wait, we'll wait. show you that. There's one more thing. Oh, to show. what do you have now? So what's really neat is because this is a service that our platform is delivering, we've showed you the service in the web application. But we're also able to bring the service right to you inside of the tools and experiences that you use today. In this particular case, this is the service connecting to Excel, analyzing the data in Excel, and delivering recommendations from our service right in that experience. So the recommendations and the data follow us, regardless of whether we're a cloud or our favorite client. Yep, absolutely. How hot is that? <laughs>